Hi, I'm Dr. O'Donovan, and in this video, we're going to be discussing everything I think you need to know about diabetic kidney disease, which you might also hear called diabetic nephropathy. Now, it's a condition that can happen to some people with diabetes when their kidneys start to get damaged. Now, if it's not maintained properly, it can sometimes lead to kidney failure. And obviously, this is something we really want to avoid. Now, the main goal with treating diabetic kidney disease is twofold. Firstly, to keep it from getting worse, so it doesn't progress to full kidney failure. And secondly, to reduce the chance of heart disease and stroke, because these are more likely to happen if someone has got both diabetes as well as kidney problems. By the way, if you ever want more details on how kidneys and urine work, I've included useful links in the description box of this video, plus links to other trusted resources, which you might want to check out in your own time if you're interested in learning more about diabetes management and control. Now, in this video, we're going to cover the following topics, all of which are timestamped and split into chapters. I'd obviously encourage you to watch the whole video so that you get a full and comprehensive picture, but if you want to skip ahead to any sections, please feel free to do so. So, first of all, what exactly is diabetic kidney disease? Well, diabetic kidney disease starts when high blood sugar damages the kidney filters. These are also known as the glomeruli, and you can see some pictures of these on screen now. Now, they start to leak, letting a protein that's called albumin get into your urine in larger amounts. At first, this leakage might be mild, but over time, it can grow worse, and your kidney function can therefore drop. Now, if it gets really advanced, it can lead to kidney failure. Now, why does this develop in diabetes? Well, when your blood sugar is high, it triggers certain chemical changes in your kidneys that make these filters, which are called the glomeruli, leakier. Over many years, scarring can build up, replacing healthy kidney tissue. Now, if the kidneys become too scarred, they can't filter your blood the way that they're meant to, and that's when kidney failure becomes a risk. Now, in terms of how common it is, well, diabetic kidney disease is actually the number one cause of kidney failure in the UK. Now, when I heard about this figure, I was actually quite surprised, and I knew that kidney damage was a real risk with poorly controlled diabetes, but what I didn't know was that about 30 to 40% of people with diabetes, whether it's type 1 or type 2 diabetes, will develop some form of this kidney issue. Now, in type 1 diabetes, signs of kidney problems usually show up years down the road. Now, for instance, around five years after someone's diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, about one in seven people have early kidney changes. After 30 years, that could be closer to four in 10 people, and a smaller percentage end up needing dialysis. On the other hand, type 2 diabetes makes up the majority of diabetes cases. Sometimes people already have some kidney changes when they're very first diagnosed, simply because they've had high blood sugar for a while before realizing that they have diabetes. Now, up to four in 10 folks with type 2 diabetes will actually develop kidney issues eventually, and a portion of them may need dialysis. Now, something that I want to flag from a health equity perspective is that South Asian and black people with diabetes seem to be at higher risk for kidney disease compared to white people, although we're still learning the exact reasons why this is the case. So now let's discuss some of the potential signs and symptoms of diabetic kidney disease. Well, early on, there might not be any obvious symptoms. That's why regular checkups are really important. Now, as the condition gets worse, some common complaints include feeling really tired, losing your appetite, or noticing swelling in your feet and ankles. You might also see puffiness around your eyes, or you might need to pee more often. Now, when the kidneys struggle even more, you may have anemia, making you look pale or feel weak, or issues with bone health because of changes in calcium and other minerals that the kidneys are responsible for. Now, if you're still watching this video at this point and you've got any questions, please do leave them in the comments section and I'll do my best to get back to you. But please do remember, I can't provide individual medical advice. So how do we diagnose diabetic kidney disease? Well, we usually check two things each year if you have diabetes. First is a urine test. So we measure how much albumin is in your urine. And we're specifically interested in something called the albumin creatinine ratio or the ACR. Now an ACR between three and 30 milligrams per millimole 
is often called microalbinuria, a sign of early kidney trouble. If it goes over 30 milligrams per millimole, we call it albuminuria or proteinuria. This is a more advanced stage. The second thing we do is a blood test. So we measure kidney function by looking at something called creatinine to estimate what we call your glomerular filtration rate, which you might know as the EGFR. Now, anything over 60 is generally normal, but numbers between 15 and 59 show reduced function of the kidneys, and below 15 means kidney failure. Sometimes you can have a normal EGFR, but an abnormal urine test, or vice versa, and that's why we test both your urine and your blood. Now, if there's any confusion about what's causing the kidney issues, doctors might do an ultrasound scan, or very rarely a biopsy where they'll use a very fine needle to take a sample of your kidney tissue for more detailed information. So now we know about the potential symptoms and monitoring, well, what are some potential risk factors for developing diabetic kidney disease? Well, anyone with diabetes could get kidney disease, but the chances go up slightly if your blood sugar levels have been high for a long time or if you have high blood pressure. Also being overweight, smoking, or having a family background of South Asian or Afro-Caribbean heritage also plays a part. Now, there are some possible complications of diabetic kidney disease that I'd like you to be aware of. In fact, I want you to be aware of the three main ones. So the first is end-stage kidney failure. This is when dialysis or a transplant, so a kidney transplant, becomes necessary. The second is heart disease and stroke. Diabetes already raises the risk of these two things, and kidney disease can compound it. And finally, high blood pressure. So kidney disease can increase blood pressure, which in turn worsens kidney problems if it's not controlled. Now, we are getting towards the end of this video, and there are just two things that we still have to cover. Firstly, treatment, and secondly, outlook for diabetic kidney disease. So first of all, how do we treat it? Well, the first option are something called ACE inhibitors or angiotensin II receptor antagonists. These help lower blood pressure and also protect the kidneys, even if your blood pressure isn't actually high. The second option for medication are SGLT2 inhibitors, and these help the body to get rid of excess sugar through urine and also reduce kidney pressure. Venenerone is a newer option that blocks certain hormones that can damage the kidneys, typically for type 2 diabetes with significant kidney disease. Now, something that is obviously overlooked is just having good blood sugar control. So keeping your HbA1c in a healthy range helps slow down the damage. Another really important thing to do is to manage your blood pressure. Sometimes more than one blood pressure medication is needed to keep it in check, but something really important that we'll discuss at the end are lifestyle measures. The sixth option are medication reviews. So you might need to adjust other drugs you're taking because certain medications can strain the kidneys. Cholesterol control is really important and a statin can help prevent or slow down complications like heart disease. And finally, the most important but often overlooked option for managing diabetic kidney disease are lifestyle changes. So stopping smoking, eating well, possibly adjusting protein, sodium or other nutrients if your kidneys are already struggling, staying active and keeping your weight in a good place will make a huge difference. So finally, what is the outlook? Well, the course of diabetic kidney disease really varies from person to person. If it's caught early on, when you're just starting to see small amounts of albumin in your urine, treatments can often reverse that and get your urine albumin levels back to normal. Even in more advanced stages, you can slow it down with the right approach. Not everyone ends up needing dialysis or even a kidney transplant. Still, when you have kidney disease, your risk of heart attacks and strokes goes up. So tackling any other risk factors like we discussed, so high cholesterol or high blood pressure, is a really important priority. Overall, many people with diabetes can live well without ever reaching kidney failure, especially if you're proactive about your health and you work closely with your healthcare team to try and minimize these risks. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please leave me a comment and please consider sharing it with someone who you think might benefit from it. If there was anything that was unclear or you would like me to clarify anything, please just leave a comment in the comment section. Bye.